Okay, um, hello everyone. <clears throat> Alright, so the next program in chapter 5 is Math Quiz. Alright, so write a program that gives simple math quizzes. The program should display two random numbers that are to be added, such as 247 plus 129. The program should allow the user to enter the answer. If the answer is correct, a message of congratulations should be displayed. <clears throat> Sorry about that. If the answer is incorrect, a message showing the correct answer should be displayed. Okay, so we should basically write a program that's going to generate random numbers, two random numbers, and ask the user what's the sum of these two random numbers. And then we should allow the user to enter the answer. If the answer that the user enters is correct to like the original or the correct answer, there should be a message saying congrats. And then if it's wrong, there should be a message saying um, the answer is not correct or, or basically showing the correct answer <clears throat> okay so so let's start now since chapter 5 is all about functions let's create functions to solve these um, to, to solve this question so the first function I'm going to go ahead and create is going to be a function that is going to ask the question all right so I'm going to go ahead and define a function I'm going to call it ask question um, sorry ask question well before that I'm going to import the random um, module since we're going to be using random numbers in this class. So I'm going to go ahead and import it so that we have access to it. So import random and then what I'm going to do even before I, I um, start, the, start asking the questions is to declare um, or basically um, yeah to, to create uh, two random numbers right so I'm going to create the first number, first random number, which is going to be random. Let's see. Um, random number one. Random number one. It's going to be equal to random dot rand int, random integer. And I'm creating a range from one to, oh, according to this question, it looks like it's 250, right? So from one to 250. From 1 to 250 so create a random number in the range from 1 to 250 inclusive inclusive these numbers are included 1 and 250 are included <coughs> sorry about that okay so now we have to go ahead and create the second random number so it's going to be the same idea basically so I'll copy this and paste that below change this to random number 2 create the same random number in the same range so now that we have our two random numbers, we can basically ask our question. Now, asking our question, I'm going to say that I'm going to use an input function. Well, no, first of all, let, let, let me use a print function, and I'll explain why. Okay, so the print function, using the print function, I'm going to say, what is the sum of, that's going to be my first argument. And I'm going to say random number, random number one, Okay, and then I'm going to say, oh, basically, what is? I'll just I'll just change this to what is, and I change. And this will be this will be the, the first number, and then the third argument is going to be plus. The fourth argument is going to be the second random number. So random number two. Now the thing is, in this in this function, um, in this function, we wouldn't have access to the these two random numbers this function doesn't know wh what these two random numbers are but the thing is that they are declared outside the, the function they are declared in the global scope <coughs> yeah they are, de they are declared in the global scope but we, we can refer to them using the global keyword and say okay although you don't know what these are I'm referring to the, the these variables declared outside of the outside of the function so the way I refer to them is by using the keyword global I'm saying hey I'm ref for these two variables I'm not trying to create two new variables in this function I'm, I'm referring to the global I'm referring to, the, to these these variables in the global scope I'm referring to the random number one in the global scope okay outside this function so the same way I'm not I'm not re I'm not redeclaring them I'm just referring to the random number variables in outside the as outside of sorry before that, this function has to have two parentheses. Sorry, that's why it was um, being underlined. 
All right. So I'm referring to the two random numbers outside of this function in the global scope. Okay. So now, now I have access to these num these variables because I referred to them over here. I referred to the two random number random numbers in the global scope outside. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and print what is this number plus this number, right? And I'll add. Let's see. I'll add a colon. Um, okay, I'll just leave it here for now. And then after that, I'm going to now call use the input function. And then add a colon. But the thing is, we know that <clears throat> when we accept input from the user using the input function, it always returns a string. Even if the user types in a number, it's going to return a string because that's how the input function works. It takes whatever the user types or whatever the user gives it and returns it as a string. Sorry, so even if the user enters a number, instead of returning that number as an integer or let's say as a float or as, an, as a number, it's going to return it as a string. But the thing is we can't use numbers, sorry, we can't use strings in calculations, right? We can use numbers rather, but we can't use strings. So we have to find a way to convert the string that is being returned to a number so we can use it in calculation. So in this case, we display this question to the user when we use the input function to accept inputs. This is just to display a colon at the end to make it look like you know there's a there's an input there. So once the user types in something, we want to go ahead and convert it to um, an integer because since we since it looks like we're dealing with integers here, let's go ahead and convert it to an integer. So I'm going to call the int function and surround everything that the user has typed here with uh, parentheses. Normally, I'll, I'll type this message in, in the input function, but I just wanted to display it a bit differently. That's why I use a print function. Um, we can go ahead and basically copy this and paste it here. We'll have to convert these to a string or this to a string, but um, um, let, okay, we can actually do that. The, the reason why I didn't do that is because chapter 5 doesn't cover that. Co that doesn't cover that str function, although we can simply do it. So I just wanted to stick with this. Um, all right, so let's let's just try to keep it a bit simple, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, this say statement here, and get rid of the print. And then in the input function, we'll display the message this way, um, this way, and remove some of these commas. So what is? And I'm going to concatenate with the random number, and then concatenate this so what is random number one plus I mean, conc I mean concatenated with this okay so what is this number plus this number I don't need this comma here and I don't need let's see Just get rid of all that. All right. So close this here. All right. So what is random number one? Okay. We add in a string to it. I'm going to say plus random number two. Um, this way. We concatenate it with let's say another question mark. Well, in a colon, I guess. There's the only problem is that um well let me see I'm not done with this this is for so I need to close the input function the, sorry the end function I've closed the input function here so I need to close that okay so the only problem we have is now when we try to display it this way Python is going to complain that it cannot convert concatenate a string to a an uh, an, an integer in this case. Because this is generating an integer, so Python is going to complain that it can't convert a string, um, or yeah, it can't convert a float to a string, right? So it, it, it would want us to do it ourselves. It, it, would, it would complain that it can't do it explicitly. So it would want us to do it um, ourselves by doing it 
um, in, in an implicit manner. So we can go ahead and call the str function, which is basically converting that integer number to a float so that it can be displayed. Whereas we can do the same thing for this one. And now it wouldn't have a problem trying to concatenate a string to a string. Okay, so I, um, th this line here is like a guideline. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a guideline to help me write 80 characters on a line. Uh, it's a Python standard to, to write 80 characters on a line. So I have it there to just restrict me and to guide, and to guide me. So I try to keep 80 char characters on a line. So now I know that I've exceeded it, so I want to break it somewhere around here. What I'm going to do is to just type in a backslash. Before you break any line in Python, you type backslash and hit enter. I'll break it, right? So a backslash first before you break it. And then now we should be fine. Let's go ahead and create a main method, right? Our main function. The main function is the function that sh you should run anytime, or is the first function that you should run anytime you're, run, you're, run, you're running your program. That is your starting point. That is the function that calls every other function. So it's it's your it's your main your main function. Okay, in most programs, the main function is the function that runs automatically when you run your program. So that should be your main function where you run all your programs. Okay. So in the main function, that I'm, I'm, that's why I'm going to write my program. That's why I'm going to call all my functions. Uh, let's just test out the ask ask question um, function. So I'm just going to go ahead and just call it. I'm going to call the ask question function. Um, nothing is going to happen when I run it because I've only defined main, but I haven't called it. I have to call it for something to happen. So I've called it over here now. Let's run it and see what's, hap what's going to happen. Let's save this file where I save the Python programs. I'm going to create a new folder on in there. I'm going to call it math quiz. And I'm going to save this also as math quiz 